Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose a and b are real numbers. Then the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. Now, we're going to say that our definition of absolute value is as follows. Okay, so now let's get into proving the theorem. And to start out the proof, let's give ourselves two arbitrary real numbers, a and b. And to prove this statement, we're going to consider six cases. And in all six cases, we're going to prove that this is true. The first case we're going to consider is a is equal to zero. And now we're going to establish a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Now, since a is equal to zero, we can replace the a here with zero. We know that zero times b is equal to zero. By definition of absolute value, the absolute value of zero is equal to zero. We know that zero is equal to zero times the absolute value of b. And since a is equal to zero, we know by definition of absolute value that the absolute value of a is equal to zero. So I can replace the zero here with absolute value of a. So we have established a chain of equalities showing that this is equal to this, as we want it. So this completes the case where a is equal to zero. Now we're going to move on to the case where b is equal to zero. And again, we're going to establish a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Now, since b is equal to zero, we can replace the b here with zero. We know that a times zero is zero. By definition of absolute value, the absolute value of zero is zero. We know that zero is equal to the absolute value of a times zero. And since b is equal to zero, by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of b is equal to zero. So I can replace the zero here with absolute value of b. So we have established a chain of equalities showing that this is equal to this, which is what we wanted. Now let's move on to the next case which is where a and b are both greater than zero. And again, we're going to establish a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Now, since a and b are both greater than zero, this implies a times b is greater than zero. So by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a times b is equal to a times b. However, also by definition of absolute value, since a is greater than zero, the absolute value of a is equal to a. Since b is greater than zero, absolute value of b is equal to b. So I can replace the a here with absolute value of a, and replace the b here with absolute value of b. And so we have established a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal, which is what we wanted. So now let's move on to the next case, where a is greater than zero and b is less than zero. And again, we're going to establish a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Now, since a is greater than zero and b is less than zero, this implies a times b is less than zero. So by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a times b is equal to the negative of a times b. But we know that the negative of a times b is the same thing as a times the negative of b. And now, applying the definition of absolute value, since a is greater than zero, the absolute value of a is equal to a. Since b is less than zero, the absolute value of b is equal to the negative of b. So we can replace the a here with absolute value of a. We can replace the negative b here with absolute value of b. And so as you can see, we have a chain of equalities showing that those two are equal. Exactly what we wanted. Now let's move on to the next case, where a is less than zero and b is greater than zero. And again, we're going to establish a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Now, since a is less than zero and b is greater than zero, this implies a times b is less than zero. So applying the definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a times b is equal to the negative of a times b. But the negative of a times b is the same thing as the negative of a times b. Right? So just like that. And by definition of absolute value, since a is less than zero, the absolute value of a is equal to the negative of a. Since b is greater than zero, the absolute value of b is equal to b. So really, we can replace the negative a with absolute value of a, and replace the b with absolute value of b. 
And so again, we have a chain of equalities showing that these two are equal. Let's go to our final case where a is less than zero and b is less than zero. And again, we're going to establish a chain of equality showing that these two are equal. Now, since a is less than zero and b is less than zero, this implies a times b is greater than zero. So applying the definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a times b is equal to a times b. But we know that a times b is the same thing as the negative a times the negative of b. And now applying the definition of absolute value, since a is less than zero, the absolute value of a is equal to negative a. Since b is less than zero, absolute value of b is equal to negative b. So we can replace the negative a with absolute value of a, replace the negative b with absolute value of b. And so again, we have a chain of equality showing that these two are equal, exactly what we wanted. And these cases are exhaustive, meaning when you give ourselves two arbitrary real numbers, a and b, one of these has to be true. So it follows that the absolute value of a times b is equal to the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.